Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from New York City in WCS America. Axel Toss here alongside Axel. I've cast in some Challenger League to find out which two players in this group are going to Premier League Season 2. Pretty important place to be. Very, very important. We just saw STC win game number one, but Max said, showed some great play. I mean, I, I think he was ahead up until that one yeah. engagement. The Storm is a little bit late. Game number two is going to be on Whirlwind. This is a much bigger map, much more spread out much more uh, uh, availability to really utilize a drop play, but also on the Protoss side, utilize a lot of warpings and constantly harass your opponent with those Zealot run -bys. Yeah, Whirlwind, one of those maps where, you, you know, you're likely to see those fast expansion builds. Players show a lot of respect for each other. A long rush distance, like Akalon wastes in a lot of defense. And again, very similar, um, very similar coordination between the bases as far as maneuvering drops in between, right? The main and the third, that could be so annoying, defending drop harass. So Protoss, again, has to be very on top of that. And again, we saw Max said, deal with that drop play brilliantly. It, it was it was fantastic. He was entering the mid game. He was entering the 15 to 17 minute mark with the supply advantage against Terran. When again, the Terran player is supposed to have that supply lead. So, uh, you know, it just fell apart in, in that big engagement. So we'll have to see what happens here in game two. Either player can take it, I can assure you. But uh, I'm proud to present in the bottom left hand location, your blue Protoss player representing team Invictus Gaming and hailing from China. He is Max Sed. His opponent in the top left of Whirlwind, your Red Terran player, representing Team Complexity. Currently up 1-0, he is one win away from advancing to the winner's match of this group. He is the STC. Look at this gas first from the STC. He wants to mix things up a bit. You know what? Whirlwind's a four-player map, and a lot of these gas first builds that the Protoss is caught off guard by them. Mm -hmm. Can we really, you know, a lot of probes can die by the time you realize what's going on. Gas first could be fast. Hellions could be fast. What a mind drop. It could even be something <laughs> that gets straight to a cloak banshee it type of It could be build. anything, man. Um, you know, obviously the issue being the Protoss needing to scout it so they can start making the preparations. Though a lot of Protoss builds these days don't involve too much scouting because the builds are kind of designed to deal with that anyway. Like, Very robust. Right. Like, like, like getting that expansion, but then getting the robo soon after to make sure you have that detection no matter what. Even some players getting very early forge so they can start an early upgrade. Then using cannons mostly to defend. That can be a little bit dangerous though, but players have been doing that. So we'll see what Max said ends up doing here. He's electing not to scout. And it's one of those things where it's a four-player map, as you said, where you can send a probe out and just find out nothing. And then the probe will die. So you have this probe going a cross-country race around Whirlwind, and then ends up dying to a Marine, finding out absolutely nothing when he could have been back home being useful mining. So it looks like Max had decided, you know what? No probes got in this game, my friend. One thing that can be dangerous is the last game, Max, of course, didn't scout the probe either, but he scouted with the Zealot Stalker Militia Corps poke. And if yes. he tries to go for that poke against an opponent who's doing something like a fast drop play, his units are caught out when they're in the middle of the field. That could be a very dangerous situation for Maxon. So uh, against his gas first opening, Protoss just really wants to position your units to intercept any potential aggression. First Zeld is now coming out, and that might go straight on to... Actually, no, he canceled that because he wants to go for a Nexus. Ah, you know, players will do that, of course. Um, making that Zeld just to make sure, you know, nothing is, is going to be annoying in the early game. Perhaps fool your opponent if they, they run by your gateway. Of course, uh, canceling it so they can have that, those minerals faster. So you can get that expansion down faster so later on your economy can get uh, up and running faster. So we're seeing an interesting clash of builds as far as Max said going for that economic focus, very fast expansion, whereas the SEC again going for that fast early gas. So we are going to see some drop play from him. Now it's important to note he did not get a second gas that is the STC. So it's not like he's planning to go super heavy investment into this. He's, he's freeing up some of the, 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 the mineral income for an eventual command center. That's right, and, and you know, given how he played last game, he went Command Center first on Aklon Waste, and Max might be saying, you know what, he went Command Center first on Aklon Waste and he uh, won with it, yep. he's almost sure to do Command Center first on Whirlwind, where that's the most popular Terran opening. And, and so I don't know if Max said is really going to be quite ready for this. He's going for a Stargate as opposed to a Robo. So this is dangerous. Go on, though. Sorry. Yeah, it is a little dangerous because he won't really have easy detection. Of course, you can make the Oracle and use it to detect, but the Oracle is more expensive than an Observer. And if you use that Envision ability, the Oracle doesn't have energy to use any other ability, so you just paid a lot of money for, for a temporary Observer. Um, so while it, it can work, you may have to use that against Windermine Drops. Uh, this could be a very difficult opening to deal with for Maxed. 
You know, his, it's interesting. His Stargate is still rallied to the bottom right. So, okay, it looks like he, okay, he did switch to the top left. It looks like the probe just found out where his opponent is. And he's making an Oracle first. So he might have a situation where the Oracle and the Medivac see each other in midair. And Maxed has to make that decision. Okay, do I back up to provide that detection and help deal with this drop? Or do I continue with his Oracle to my opponent's main base? Now, the trick part about that is you can be caught off guard. But he did see the Hellion at the front door. So he should know this is coming. Oh, does he know about the medevac though? Zenith units are at the front, the medevac's coming into the main, there's nothing in the main. Oh, you gotta put on overcharge a robo going down right away, but it might be a little bit too late. However, the Oracle is here to detect if needed. Mothership Corps getting targeted down by the Marines, both on overcharge going down in the main base, and the Oracle deploying its, its pulsar beam, so not gonna have detection available. And one probe just finding that out the hard way. This is good. That widow mine's gonna be very annoying. The good news is he knows where he knows where it is. So he's yeah. just gonna wait for the energy on the oracle. And it can't really move down because if it tries to move to the natural, the stalkers can pick it off. So the oracle is able to kill the marines, uh, leaving the oh, widow mine undefended. It's a phoenix. That medevac might be dead. Oh, he's got to get that medevac back to base. Oracle, of course, heading towards the base as well. The marine inside is like, drive faster, please ignite <laughs> the afterburners. I can't. Why not? It's on cooldown. Marine, and how could be dropped? But he's dead. Oh, the Phoenix oh. may overchase. There's a Widow Mine there. Uh. Oh, gotta be so careful. You know, <laughs> he could have killed the Medivac with the Phoenix, but the Phoenix would have died as well on that confrontation. Yeah. And that's a situation mm. where it's, it's not obvious what's yeah. the correct move. Looks like the Widow Mine was taken out. Um, so, let's, let's, let's take a look at damage control here. Max it as a supply lead. Income is 30 to 30 in favor of the Protoss. And again, he had that natural a little, a little bit sooner. So, the Protoss' economy is going to be fantastic right now. Uh, compared to his opponent. Now, you have to consider the Terran player does have two orbitals, so it's plenty of mules. But, you know, I think Max said overall is going to be relatively happy with how, how that uh, early game went. He's going to be very happy. I mean, he, he has an economic advantage. Mm -hmm. Not a huge one, but it's there. He also has a tech advantage. He has Robo done. He's starting to support, but he's got air units already out, so those air units are going to give him map control. The Oracle's coming to the natural, the Terran player. Oh. How many workers can it get? No turret. I'm going to guess four. Oh, Medivac. Kind of now, I don't know how many kills that, or that the Oracle had before, but I can't I, look it at It only got two in that last okay. little I think poke. it got four. Workers killed yeah. is five in total. So not bad. Or two from Max and five from SEC. Oh. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. what I meant. Yeah. So, now, now, there's an interesting thing to talk about as far as target opening. Because one of the dangers of Stargate openings is it, it delays your AoE tech so much, right? It's like your Storm, your Colossi, the stuff you kind of need against Mass Bio. And we're seeing a situation where Robo Bay is about to finish, but I wonder if there's a timing from the SDC that can hit before the Colossus gets out. I mean, he doesn't really have too many units right now. In fact, uh, a revelation goes on on that army, so it's totally revealed the first Colossus is already in production. So by the time he can cross the map, that should be on time to defend it. Also notice how Max said, is continuing to make phoenixes, but he's hidden that fact from SEC. He's oh. not showing the phoenixes. Uh, now he's starting to move out with a few of them, and it's going to be a very powerful combination. SEC, no third base. Very difficult to forward two starports on a single base, and so trying to get enough Vikings to do both the phoenix and the colossi is going to be very difficult for him. Yeah, that's a fantastic point. Definitely going to need a second starport. We have a third command center on the way here from the SEC. Medivac's overextending. Oh no, oh. every Medivac is so important. That guy is full energy, and he's gone. Marines trying to take revenge, but the Phoenix is too fast for that. Going to be backing away. One Marine being very brave and checking on that third. And when you're doing this Phoenix Colossi strategy, you really the ideal things for you to kill are the Medivacs and the Vikings. Yeah. So you really want to stress that starport production. Terran at this point only has one starport. Maybe at most they're starting a second one right now. And, and every unit you kill is just very difficult for difficult for them to reproduce. They're stuck with an army that's all Marines and no air units. With force fields and Colossi, I have no problem dealing with that. All right, so... Uh, you know, it is whirlwind, so it's not like once you take an advantage, you can just kill your opponent. The defender's advantage is very huge. Uh, and being able to identify when your opponent is moving out and what kind of composition they have. It looks like both players are going to be playing relatively passively for now. Of course, it's hard for the SDC to be aggressive here because of all those phoenixes in the air. Every single second, your medivacs are going to be very vulnerable, and you always have to worry about the harassment from from Maxa. Now, it could have been a little bit, oh, taking out a Viking, too. Every single Viking is so important. Uh, I would like to see Maxa check on the third base of his opponent, though. That's right, the Phoenixes could do that, of course. Right now, remember, uh, because he's been focusing really on the, getting the Colossi count up to support his army because mm -hmm. his ground forces are small, uh, he's scared to really send the Phoenix out to harass because he doesn't have that insane map vision that he had with the Observers in the last right. game. So the Phoenixes, really, their main purpose is to, in the battle, kill Vikings, and then out of battle, entirely stop drops. So if you have them across the map, sometimes yeah. you can get some good SCV kills. 
but there also is some risk associated with that. Maybe your opponent can get those drops in. Yeah, so, so rather than taking that risk and going to harass your opponent a lot, sticking back and making sure you're, you're safe against that stuff. But we can see Maxed has an Observer right outside his opponent's natural expansion, so he can identify exactly when his Terran opponent moves out. So now he can feel very happy coming into this third base, getting a lot of SCV kills, going to back away, losing one Phoenix, maybe two, nope, just one. And it looks like he is up to five workers kill. Max with a proxy pylon. He's warping in more units. Looks like he may oh. want to go for some type of timing here. He does have Colossal range. He has air control to Phoenix as is well. Is SCC's army split up? Does he still have army at the third? Uh, his whole army is pretty much at the third, but it's oh, not that big. Not no. enough Vikings to deal with the Phoenix. Force will go down. Colossus doing a lot of damage. The, uh, the Phoenix is targeting down those Vikings, and STC trying to make a defense. But look at this. Max out of 109 to 97 in supply. Phoenix dealing with every single anti-air that STC has. And here are the Zealot reinforcements. Again, Max out with such a close proxy pile, and he's able to reinforce very quickly. But it looks like the STC might barely hold this off. But again, Max head's position is just so great right now. It is. There's just not oh, the, the Zelts are tanking so well. The Colossal Rune damage. Stalkers come in to aid as well. He's a little bit worried about letting the Zelts get dragged too far away from the Colossal, but now the third is lifted. They just an evac oh. with the butt. Gosh. Oh, and he like, takes him out. That had a lot of units inside. Max said, so good with this Phoenix. Again, this is a style that your control has to be impeccable because Phoenixes are really fast. And you can lose track of them very quickly. Max said, showing just how good his control is. Going to be charging into the natural expansion, trying to even up the series. That turret is going to fall in a second. No bunkers here. The STC is in so much trouble right now. Look how careful he is not to let his Zelts over to stand, keeping them back by those Colossi. Yeah, and the Phoenix is sticking to where the Vikings are, letting the Colossus, letting the ground army do the damage to that bio. SCV is being pulled here from the STC, lifting that natural command center, but all the Vikings are gone. What's going to deal with these Colossus? I'm not even I'm not sure. And Maxed should take this game. Great uh, little display of, of Phoenix Colossus play. Beautiful, beautiful game there by Maxed. I mean, it all started out with that perfect defense. He only took, I think he only lost five probes. Yeah. And he was able to kill pretty much almost every element of the attack. Minivac got home with only a single Marine and two Hellions were killed as well. Uh, and then his Oracle gave him good sky information. Right. And then later he just totally shut down the vision of STC with the Phoenixes. You know, he, he took control of the Watchtower, he killed a scouting Viking, and then STC got his army kind of stuck in the third base, not really yeah. wanted to have it. Uh, just got annihilated. That was a really cool heads up move there from Max said. Moving those Phoenixes to the third, so in his mind he knew, okay, there's probably units coming here to kill my Phoenixes, so I'm going to move the rest of my army up. And not only that, placing a pylon very close, that allows you to reinforce very quickly, able to cut his opponent's army in half, and whenever that happens, even in you know general warfare, right? Any 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 army book you read out there is going to say if you can cut off your opponent's you know reinforcements, it's going to be good. Unless it's like a sandwich situation where yeah. you get the concave from your opponent. But again, Max said able to prevent that from happening, taking out the SDC to even up the series one to one. But again, guys, this is a best of three, so it all comes down to the next game. Stay tuned, guys. More WCS America coming up.